Hey guys, I'm Coxie. Three years ago, I obtained all pets in the game, and now it's time to run it back. A fresh new account with no stats or items, starting from scratch, with one goal in mind, speedrunning all pets as fast as possible. This is Funny Feelings. Yo! It is episode five time, baby. In our last episode, we managed to make over 500 mil from the Vedion pet hunt and obtain the pet himself on 4,586 KC. We then smashed out one of the quickest pets in the game, Chaos Elemental at 632 KC, putting us at a total of five pets. There's a lot of content cooking up in my head for where I wanna take this account, so let's get straight to it. As my mom always said, get your chores done first, then you get to have fun with the rest of your night. I'm gonna take her wise words and I'm gonna spend this time cleaning up my account. There are multiple things I don't necessarily want to do, but I need to do in order to make my account the best it can be for optimally pet hunting. First things first, we need to get our construction up. I'm tired of using my alts POH for tellies or ornate pool, so off to getting 85 construction. Construction will also allow me to build master clue stashes, which will be very beneficial to the speed of me doing my master clues. Step one of the account chore list done. We knocked this out in just under four hours. Quick, easy, and genuinely beneficial for the longevity of the account. Ouch, we are about down 10 mil from buying all this stuff to build a max POH. This is definitely the worst part of the process, but let's get it out of the way. Let's get it built. We never have to worry about it again. For the final upgrade, Ornate Pool finishes it off just in time before the plus four boost disappears. Alrighty, well, we got everything built, maxed out Nexus. We got our ornate pool, a full jewelry box, and an occult altar. Woo, POH is looking good. It is about time. Hey, there is 90 fire making coming on in hot. This is on our list of chores to do because fire making's only boost is spicy stews. And even though getting a plus two is very quick, having to go get spicy stews for this step during every master step over the potential of a thousand master clues seems like a total pain. So quick and easy two levels knocked out of the way. And we've just completed RD3, RD hard. We're probably gonna go down and complete hard for every single diary and specifically elite for Kandarin right now. That is the only elite diary that I absolutely know I'm going to rush. It's not to say that's the only one going to be completed, but definitely the only one that I'm gonna rush. There is a quick desert hard completed. Thank you, Jar. Falador hard's done now. More agility XP too. Ooh, wait, we are getting pretty close to 80. This diary is also basically essential for the molt pet hunt, so gotta get it done. 200 and 50 high gambles completed, which means we are officially now one fourth of the way to the BA pet rate. Nice. And another one, Fermanic hard's done, which means our boots now tell us once per day to the middle of Relica Town Center, which is great for clues or doing one trip of Orkath if that's what you want to do. We are smashing through these hard diaries. There is Karen and Kevos hard's done. Plus, this lamp will also get us a beautiful 80 agility. That is going to be the Cerberus shortcut unlocked, which is actually massive for the account. We now only have Lumbridge, Mortania, Verak, and Wilderness left until all heart diaries are done and we can move on with our chore list. No, the final birdhouse run we will ever do on this account. I kind of like doing birdhouse runs. It's a nice little two minute break, two minute buffer in whatever content you're doing. I don't want to know how many we've done in total from level one to 80, but this is going to officially unlock herbivore. Similar to how Tempo Ross pet and Heron work, it is now the most efficient for me to do herby until pet since my hunter level does not affect my herby harvest per hour and then go to Chen's after where my hunter level does highly affect my chin catch rate the rest of the hard diaries have been finished off well minus lumbian drainer because who really wants to do bones to peaches i'll end up putting that off for a lazy netflix day as you might be able to tell it is now time for the highly anticipated music cave starting off with hydra keep in mind common misconception you do not need a task or 95 slayer for this music track Courtesy to Calaverion Pet Hunt, we got this passive champion scroll, which is typically one of the harder music tracks to get since champion scrolls are all one in 5,000 drop rate. I'm not gonna lie, I already missed that boss and all the money we made from there. Skelly Champ, it is your turn to die now. I'm sorry, King. Oh, sad story. Last night I ended up getting hacked and we're unfortunately starting over from no GP and this is actually the best gear that I can afford currently. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, okay. No, I can't, I can't keep it up. I'm just kidding. I need a music track for Bryophyta, and uh, Elite Common Achievements is something that I always need to have in the back of my mind for the extra elite clue chance throughout the entire game. So we're just knocking out the free-to-play gear Bryophyta combat achievement for the free task while we get our music track. Knocking out two birds with one stone. Pretty sure there's five music tracks locked behind a TOA completion, so here we go. Oh, oh, wow. And a lot of combat achievements too, okay. A uh, not so quick 150 invocation TOA completed, but necessary to do. We well, are getting pretty close to this cape, just a few more big ones, and the music cape will be ours. Big Green Salamander, you are up next. Action decent points, good luck us. Okay, a dex? All right. <laughs> We also get an Elite Crin and Cables Diary Task alongside the music track for Chambers. I'm pretty sure we have over 10 people inside this raid, so I guarantee that job's going to be free-for-all, but it is definitely cool to see on our first ever Chamber of Zarek KC. First Criara KC on the account, Elite Task in the Fremenic area, and we also need these Frozen Keys for the next music tracks. Easy first kill, man. Oh, this just made me excited for the God Wars pet grind. Ziliana, you are up next, and this is our final key piece before we can enter the frozen door, which unlocks one of the most nostalgic bosses in the whole game for me. Next. All right, there's 40 ancient KC, which means we are one step closer. Oh, the nostalgia, man. I hope some of you guys were there and played during next release on the main game. Bro, shout out to 2011 when this whole bank, this whole waiting area was filled with chaotic crossbows, pack yaks, and overloads. What a time to play the game. First, next KC coming in quick. Oh, well, okay. I'm not sure of elite rates here, but that's a great thing to see. Tunnel of Master and Elite Combat Achievements also done. That is four tasks completed. I'm going to stay for one more kill to do, in my opinion, one of the best combat achievements to ever come in the game. A toxic combat achievement, but one of the best for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you what madness and chaos looks like. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, every single person is coughing now. This common achievement requires cough to be spread and active throughout the entire next kill, and it is definitely the easiest to do in a mass world. I'm sure they don't appreciate it, but hey, man, what can you do? I'm not the one who came up with this idea for a task. I gotta say, I love it, but I am definitely not the one to blame in this situation. We are back at my favorite place in the game, good old Blast Furnace. 90 smithing is a requirement for Kandarin Elite to smith a rune hosta, and Kandarin Elite Diaries is not essential, but extremely convenient for master clues, so it is absolutely something that I want to get out of the way. Unfortunately, my time spent here is short, and I think this might be my last experience ever with Blast Furnace on this account, so I just wanted to say that, Blast Furnace, listen, I love you. I am never going to forget the time we had together. Hey, nice, there it is. Chewed bone on 32 KC. I believe this is around a one in 42 drop rate, so just under the drop rate, not too bad. This is another Canon Elite Diary completed. We're good to go. And this diary itself is actually such big quality of life for, um, for master clues. Having that infinite teleport to Sherlock is going to save probably 20 seconds each run. Very, very happy with this one. One of the necessary things that I wanted before actually grinding out a thousand plus master clues. Yes, sir. I just spent the last few hours slaying for Grotesque Guardian's task. I'm embarrassed to say, when I did get the Brittle Key a few weeks ago, I mindlessly put it in the bank and skipped the task. Don't ask why. I don't know the answer. Let's not think about it. Let's not talk about it. It's not like I don't need Slayer XP anyway, so it's not the biggest deal in the world, but this is going to be the final music track before we get our new cape. Let's go. Oh, ha, 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 ha. there she is. One of the biggest quality of life items for Master Clues. I'm actually going to be excited to do Master Clues now. Holy. All right. So... I'm the worst liar in the world, and I'm going to be honest, I can't really keep anything from you guys. 
I might have had a PVM death at Chaos Elemental on Deep Wilderness and lost my only Ava assembler. So we're making a return to Vorkath. This is on our list of chores to do. I was planning on just getting up to 50 KC where I get my guaranteed head, but I ended up spooning a second at 34 KC, so crisis averted. This isn't really a time loss since I do need this pet, more so just embarrassing that I died to Chaos Elemental. Very occasionally I've been doing CG. If I only have a few minutes of time or if I'm wanting a short break from the content that I've been doing, this is going to be KC number 50, which I believe unlocks a Grandmaster task oh, and the weapon seed. All right. Well, this weapon seed is definitely getting turned in for a crystal acorn. That is going to be a free roll at Tangle Root Pet. Yo, 105 master clues. We got an occult ornament kit and four mil master clue. I will take those any day. Over the last six days, we have really cleaned up this account and optimized our efficiency while doing master clues. In the long run, this will absolutely save me time and make my experience playing the account even better. For now, that is done though, and it is time to make a return to PVM and a full on proper pet hunt. Ladies and gentlemen, we're stepping foot back into the wilderness. To hunt Venenatus pet in the most efficient way, you want to kill its solo variant, Spindle. Similar to the other wilderness bosses, the quicker kills, less PKs, and ability to instantly teleport due to being under 30 wilderness will allow you to obtain more kills per hour and in return, save you time despite the pet rate being slightly more rare. For this boss, you'll want to set up similar to these. Be aware of your risk, always have protect item on, and make sure your untradeables are parchmented. Thralls are highly recommended as its free DPS and Spindle frequently drops restores. To get to Spindle the quickest, teleport to Corp Cave and head northwest to the ruins. Be aware of exiting Corp Cave as you will be in Multi. A slower but safer route is Karolinger Teleport or Ferox Enclave. The Multi lines near Spindle surround the entrance to the north and the east sides. Make sure to avoid them. Having an alt outside is extremely beneficial, allowing you to see PKers before they can enter the arena. Spindle attacks four times before moving locations. When in melee distance of Spindle, make sure to turn on Prey Melee. On the boss's first attack after spawn, Spindle will summon two spiderlings that will drain your prayer by one for every attack. Standing on the southwestern tile of Spindle will allow you to utilize chins. AoE damage will be rolled to any NPC that lies within one tile of the initial target's southwesternmost tile. In a correct situation, this means that both spiderlings and Spindle itself will be damaged, and this also saves you one tick compared to using darts. After Spindle moves twice, on its third attack, it will throw out a sticky web centered on your current location that damages you, drains your prayer, and run energy. Since your character will often automatically path through the center of the room, it is beneficial to stand towards the edge of the room for the web attack, allowing the middle of the arena to be free of any harmful webs. This pattern I've shown will repeat until Spindle is dead. Spindle can reach upwards of 50 to 55 kills per hour, meaning with a pet rate of 1 in 2800, this should roughly take you 56 hours to hit the rate. This is once again a very fast boss and its base loot is great. Averaging out to be over 6 mil GP per hour and once again having a 1 in 50 elite clue rate, this boss is great for making money and doing master clues. Oh boy, does it feel good to be back. It is 7 a.m. right now. I'm going to be honest, I could not sleep last night because I knew we'd be starting a new pet hunt today. We are going to be camping Spindle for potentially the next few weeks, making bank off the base drop table and its Void Waker piece, which is still holding strong at actually around 60 mil right now. And we just finished all of our chores, which sets up the account to have insanely fast and efficient master clues. Now that we have our candor and headgear 4, our music cape, max POH, and our stash units built. Good luck us, I have really been looking forward to this day. 30 KC and I just wanted to give you guys a little update. This boss is awesome. I can already tell it's way more relaxed than Calvarion and I thought that that boss was pretty chill as is. After dealing with the spiders at the beginning, you basically just auto retail AFK until webs and all you do during webs is just reposition yourself before it's web attack. On top of all that, it's still great combat XP so our attack level should start to see some progress real soon. Wait, what? No, no way. There's just no way. <laughs> 48 KC Jim, let's go. This bad boy is a one in 900. Oh my gosh, I actually just can't believe it. All right. Oh, well, happy birthday to me, Mary Chrysler. It is a great day today. Now just look at how beautiful that is in the GE. Yes, sir. We're getting rich. 
Okay, mummy speed, a big Kalog slot flying in. We're up to nine mimics and 111 master KC now. We will take it. No way. No, 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 no. There's just, there's, there's, there's literally no way. Not on, not on 100 KC. No, 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 no. No, no, not on 100 KC, right? I just like don't even believe it. dude we what we got a gem as well. This log is going to look gross. <laughs> 112 spindle. We have pet and a gem. What the hell? Man, what the f is our luck? I was not expecting that. Oh my gosh. Spindle ended up taking us one day to obtain, and we made around 90 mil GP from the boss, most of that being from the Void Waker gym. Even though I only had a few hours at the Big Red Spider, I'm absolutely going to miss it as it was surprisingly relaxing and seemed to only have a few PKers that hopped around. Coming up next, we're going to head down south a little bit, to a place that I've personally been very excited for. To hunt Callisto Pet in the most efficient way possible, you want to kill its solo variant, Ardeo. With quicker kills, less PKers, and the ability to instantly teleport due to being under 30 wilderness, you will save time despite the drop rate being slightly more rare. For this boss, you'll want to set up similar to these. Be aware of your risk, always have protect item on, and make sure your untradeables are parchmented. To get to Ardeo, exit Ferox Enclave out of the western side and head due north. Having an alt outside is extremely beneficial, allowing you to see PKers before they enter the arena. In Ardeo's arena, bear traps will be littered throughout the environment. Avoid them by either pathing around or running through them. By casting Ice Barrage, we can freeze Ardeo for 20 seconds at a time, completely ignoring his melee attacks. When frozen, Ardeo will attack primarily with range. When Ardeo bows down to the floor, leans back, and launches an attack, pray mage before the attack reaches you to avoid damage and getting stunned. At 66 and 33% health, Ardeo will glow red, send out a roar, and unfreeze. Refreeze the boss and continue DPSing. With access to an ult, you can significantly increase your kills per hour here, despite it being a single combat area. You'll want to gear your ult and tank gear, having Justiceer and Bulwark are the main priority. Stand your ult to the far south of the cave within melee distance of Ardeo's spawn. The boss will now alternate aggression between the two accounts, making Ice Barrage useless and allowing you to bring Thralls and Death Charge instead. Bringing a Zeric Crossbow and Light Bearer Ring allows for frequent ZCB specs, allowing you to reach over 60 kills per hour. With this pet rate being a 1 in 2800, this pet comes out to be roughly 47 hours to hit the rate. Additionally, Ardeo's Hilt is the most expensive of the three Void Waker pieces. The average loot per kill comes out to be around 150k, netting 9 mil per hour when getting top KPH rates, and having an average profit of 420 mil by 2800 KC. Good luck on this pet hunt, and enjoy the money along the way. Good morning. It is a new day today and a new boss. We are at Ardeo. I still can't really believe what happened yesterday, but I guess that's just how RG games work. We're still on our first trip out of Ardeo while I'm learning the ropes to this boss. Ardeo's Void Waker piece is the Hilt, and the Hilt, unfortunately, has crashed quite a bit in price, but it is still over 70 mil. So far with this boss, I've seen the most PKers between this Spindle and Calvarion. But, well, I guess I shouldn't really call them PKers. More so just people coming in, specking twice, and teleporting. But it is also a weekend, so I should have expected as much. Oh my god, it is a wild burger chillin' and possibly the best PK gear I have ever seen. Holy. And, oh, well, a lovely individual leaking my world. Nice. The Elite Clue Printer coughs up again. Three elites so far from Ardeo and 84kc. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I would say that. I would say that's decent. Let's knock these out fast and quick. I'll be right back. I am so happy that we have our own max POH now for these clues. Woo! All right, here we go. Three caskets: 119, 120, and 121. Oh, wow. Okay, all very average. Actually, probably all very below average. 
I uh, just woke up and we are starting day two here at RDO with a new method. No more solo RDO. It is one plus one time. Despite the fact that we are in a solo single combat area, we've dropped the barrage. We now have thralls, death charge, and we're bringing a light bearer. We also just sold our Torva helmet to buy a CCB and it slaps here. No other spec comes even close in comparison in terms of DPS. Yeah, just go ahead and ignore the PKers coming in and out. One of my friends is enjoying getting some free PvP action for me being here, but this is going to be big number 300 KC already. I am not kidding you. This is around 60 kills per hour. When I was using Webweaver Bow and Barrage, I was only getting between 50 to 55. Man, what an insane and clever method. 400 KC. We are still on day two, and I'm going to keep going because these kills are flying by. And despite it being a Sunday, it's actually surprising. There's not been that many PK or interruptions. Another triple opening coming at you fast and quick. 125, 126, and 127 Master Clue KC. Two call log slots, and we got Ale of the Gods, which is pristine fashion scape. Okay. No way. No, 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 no. I, I will not. Nah. Four. No. What? Dude. I go almost 5,000 on Vedion and then I spoon the crap out of Spindle and Callisto. <laughs> With Ardeo Pet comes the completion of the three new Wildy Boss versions that were released earlier this year. It's crazy to say, but we're already up to seven pets, and we've been on a roll the past couple weeks. But let's not stop here. There's one final wilderness pet that remains lost. It's far to the north and yet to be obtained. The quickest way to get to Scorpia is going through Edgeville Wilderness Lever and heading northeast to the Scorpion Pit. Bringing a lockpick means that you could potentially use the Magic Axe Hut as an escape from PKers. For this boss, having alts greatly benefits your kill speed. The most important alt to have is one with Ice Barrage to free Scorpia so she doesn't walk within melee distance of you. Your main account, Ice Barrager, and alt DPSers will want gear setups similar to these. A Cursed Scepter special attack has a potential for 50% increase to your max hit, making energy transfer on your DPS alts a must. You'll want to keep Protect from range up while inside the cave. Her offspring will inflict poison, which starts off dealing 20 damage, so having a form of anti-poison is necessary. Start off the kill by freezing Scorpia on your Barrager and attacking on your main account. Deal at least 50 damage on your main before piling the boss on the rest of your accounts to avoid kill snipes. When Scorpia's HP goes below 100, she will summon two guardians that heal her rapidly. You'll want to ignore them and continue DPSing until Scorpia is dead. Scorpio's pet drop rate is a 1 in 2k, and with utilizing alts, you can easily obtain 140 kills per hour, putting this boss at roughly 14 hours to hit the pet rate. Good luck on Scorpia, and enjoy this insanely fast kill speed. Good morning, Scorpia. It is crazy to say, but this is our last wilderness boss, and I'm glad I left this to be the final one because let me tell you what, it dies up fast with alts we are not even one hour in so far and already up to 100 kc let's make today a great day huh well <laughs> a back-to-back -back shard whether it be odium or malediction is one in 16,384 kc so yeah that's pretty neat unfortunately they aren't worth anything these days so i'm probably just gonna leave them to despawn one because i already have three in my inventory and two because i do need room for supplies what an interesting start to scorpia man it just feels like I blinked and we are already 500 KC. This KC is going by fast. And when I mean fast, I mean fast. The tracker says 144 KPH right now and I've actually had a few kill snipes. So maybe we could push even higher. Oh boy. Yep. Yeah, there's the lovely part about deep wilderness bosses that are stuck in multi-combat. When you get scouted, the whole brigade shows up despite the fact that you're only risking 500k tops. There is a thousand KC. If you haven't noticed yet, I'm doing a one plus four, which kind of sounds like a lot, but it's actually surprisingly easy and relaxing. It's one click per account. So it's it's not as bad as you might think. The worst part about it is definitely the PKers, which haven't been too bad as of yet. We're peaking at 150 KPH right now over the last two hours, which is a beautiful thing to see. All right. So 
Oh, yesterday turned out to be pretty awful in terms of PKers. I was getting hunted by the same team all day, so I ended up leaving the wilderness and doing some corrupted gauntlet to pass time. My new plan of action, uh, well, it is uh, actually 4 a.m. right now, and I got a big cup of coffee with me. I'm just gonna get up insanely early until I get this pet to start the day off and try to get at least six hours of undisturbed Scorpia in, or at least I'll just go until they wake up. But yeah, that is the new plan of action. Let's get this pet out of the way and let's get out of the wilderness. 2,000 KC. So actually, weird um, little informative piece about Scorpia. The dropper is not 1 in 2K, common misconception. It is 1 in 2016. So we are kind of at the drop rate, kind of not. Okay, now we are officially at the drop rate. I'm gonna be honest, before the series, I had no idea that it's technically one in 2016 drop rate instead of one in 2K, but oh well, I don't make the rules here. This does put us over rate though, and marks our fourth pet that we have surpassed the drop rate for. I'm not gonna complain because of the sheer speed of this boss, but hopefully we don't go too much over rate. For certain alt methods, I want to always give you guys a killer two of my desktop so you can see my perspective and well, for this case, see how easy the method actually is with alts. The top left client is my main, bottom left client is my barrage account, and the three on the right are just alt DPSs with spec transfer runes. You'll notice I delay either a few hits or until I see myself deal at least 50 plus damage on the main before beginning to attack on the alts. This is to ensure the main gets most of the kills and the alts snipe a very little amount. Alrighty, we managed 700 Scorpia kills yesterday before the PKers woke up, so I mean, I would call that a success. It's not quite 4 a.m. this morning, but it is still really early. So hopefully we can do another 700 undisturbed today. Oh, oh, baby, there she is. 2616, I barely went over drop rate. All right, I need to escape the wilderness quick, quick, quick. I gotta get all my accounts out too. That is pet number eight. Wait, I'm actually getting PK'd. Wait, there's a PK that showed up right now. Oh my God. All right, we have escaped the PKers that showed up right as I got pet. Um, unfortunately, I did have to hop, so the notification is out of my chat box, but this is pet number eight. This officially finishes the entire wilderness pet set. All five wilderness pets have been completed. Holy. Good morning. Go grab a cup of coffee or tea, because ladies and gentlemen, class is in session. As a quick recap, I got Calvarion pet on 4,586 KC, Chaos Elemental pet on 632, Spindle on 112, Ardeo on 480, and Scorpio on 2,616 KC. For this stat section, we have the pleasure and luck to cover the entire Wilderness pet set, so let's get started. If we took an extremely large sample size of OSRS players and forced them to obtain Calvarion pet, 80.56% of players would have obtained the pet before me. For future reference, I'm going to use the phrase, I'm in the 81st percentile of people who obtained this pet. For Chaos Elemental, I was over double the drop rate and in the 88th percentile of players. For Spindle, my luckiest PVN pet so far, I'm in the 4th percentile of players to obtain this pet. Moving on to Ardeo, another pet I was very lucky for, 16th percentile of players to obtain Ardeo. Finally, for Scorpio, I landed the 73rd percentile, once again, meaning that roughly 73% of players would have obtained Scorpio below the drop rate that I obtained mine at on 2616 KC. Because we finished the whole pet set during this stat segment, I can figure out my luck on all of them combined instead of individually. For the Wilderness pet set combined, I ended up in the 65th percentile of players, which is slightly unlucky going strictly off my KCs and their drop rates, but that might be slightly misleading, and let me tell you why. The Wilderness pet set takes roughly 180 hours to complete all five pets with efficient KPH rates. I was able to complete the Wilderness pet set in 134 hours, allowing me to save 46 hours over the span of the entire Wilderness pet set. The takeaway here is that it's not always about the number of pets you get lucky versus unlucky on, rather, which specific pets you get lucky versus unlucky on. In my case, getting lucky on Spindle and Ardeo saved me days of in-game time as opposed to my good pet luck being on, let's say, Scorpion Chaos Elemental. Now let's tie this all back to the series. The three other pets I had before Wilderness Pets was Soul Wars, Phoenix, and Rocky. 
For Soul Wars, I saved 31 hours. Phoenix Pet, I saved 101 hours. And for Rocky Pet, I lost 45 hours. In total, we are at eight pets right now, and I am 133 hours lucky on this series. That is roughly five and a half entire days that I have gained in terms of time just by getting lucky at the right bosses. Oh, this speedrun is truly off to the best start I could have imagined. It has been three months and 25 days since our account creation, and we are off to the most insane start. Our account is up to 37 days, 15 hours in game playtime, and the bank value is barely under 2 billion GP. We optimize the efficiency of our account by building ourselves a max POH and completing all hard diaries. Additionally, we've obtained the brilliant Music Cape and Candor and Headgear 4. Our Master Clue KC is up to 127 and steadily growing. To finish everything off, we obtained three pets this episode, Venonatus, Callisto, and Scorpia, which completes the entire Wilderness pet set and puts us at 8 out of 52 pets.